Ever wondered what it would be like to survive in the wilderness? Welcome to a world where the conveniences of modern life are stripped away, leaving you with nothing but your wits and skills. Survival. In today's era, we may not face survival situations often, but that doesn't make them any less important. In fact, their significance is amplified in our comfort-driven lives. In this video, we're going back to the basics, to the primal instincts that have kept mankind alive for centuries. We'll be diving deep into the art of survival, focusing on three pivotal elements, fire, water, and shelter. These are the pillars that support life in the wilderness, the skills that separate survival from surrender. We'll explore how to harness these elements, how to turn adversity into advantage, and how to thrive when the odds are stacked against you. So, let's dive right into it and explore these life-saving skills. In today's modern world, it's easy to forget how our ancestors survived without the conveniences we have. We become so accustomed to the luxuries of modern life that we often overlook the raw and rudimentary skills that are foundational to our existence. A hot meal at the touch of a button, filtered water from a tap, and a warm bed in a secure home. These are things we take for granted, not realizing they are luxuries that our forebears often went without. Our ancestors, on the other hand, were well-versed in the art of survival. They knew how to light a fire without a match, filter water without a purifier, and build a shelter without a tent. They were adept at reading the signs of nature and could predict changes in the weather long before the advent of meteorological services. Their survival was not a matter of convenience, but of necessity. In contrast, we've become complacent. We've lost touch with these vital survival skills, becoming weaker as a result. We rely heavily on technology and have lost the ability to adapt to the whims of nature. Our survival instincts have been dulled by the comforts of modern living. But let's not despair. These skills are not lost forever, they are merely forgotten and can be relearned. We can rekindle the fire of survival within us. We can reacquaint ourselves with the life-giving properties of water and the protective nature of a well-built shelter. We can relearn to respect nature and acknowledge our place within it. It's time to awaken the survivalist within us. It's time to learn and master the skills that our ancestors held dear. It's time to understand our weaknesses and transform them into strengths. This journey is not just about survival, but about rediscovering a part of ourselves that we've lost in the hustle and bustle of modern life. Now that we understand our weaknesses, let's learn how to overcome them. First on our list of survival skills is mastering the art of making fire. Fire is not just a primitive fascination. It's a lifeline when you're out in the wilderness. It provides warmth, helps you cook food, and can even signal for help. It's a beacon of hope in the cold, dark night. To start a fire, you'll need some essential tools. A fire starter is your best friend, be it a simple lighter, a match, or a ferro rod. You'll also need tinder, kindling, and fuel. Tinder is the material that first catches a spark and starts your fire. Dry leaves, grass, or small twigs work well. Kindling, slightly larger than tinder, helps the fire grow. Small sticks or chopped wood are excellent choices. Fuel, the largest of the three, keeps your fire going. Logs or large branches serve this purpose. Now let's talk about the process. First, gather your tinder, kindling, and fuel. Be sure to have a good amount of each before you start. You don't want your fire dying out because you ran out of fuel. Next, create a tinder nest. This is where you'll put your spark. Once your tinder nest is ready, strike your fire starter to create a spark. Gently blow on it to help it grow and add your kindling. Once the kindling catches, add your fuel, and there you have it a roaring fire. Dead trees can be an excellent source of kindling and fuel. Look for dead branches that snap easily. They are dry and will burn well. But remember, always respect nature and only take what you need. Another handy fire starting tool is char cloth. It's a piece of fabric, usually cotton, that's been charred and can hold a spark for a long time. To make char cloth, you'll need a tin can and a piece of cotton. Put the cotton in the can, cover it and place it in a fire. Once the smoke stops coming out of the can, your char cloth is ready. It's a simple and effective fire starter. Keeping your fire starting tools dry is crucial. A dry bag is a great investment. It can hold your fire starters, tinder, kindling, and other essential items, keeping them safe and dry. It's always smart to have backup fire starting tools. A lighter or fire plugs can be lifesavers if you lose your primary fire starter. Keep these in your survival kit, and you'll be ready for anything. 
Mastering firemaking is a skill that takes practice, but it's a skill that can save your life in a survival situation. So the next time you're on a camping trip or just out in your backyard, give it a go. Practice making fire with different tools and materials. See what works best for you and remember in the world of survival, knowledge is your most valuable tool. Remember, practice makes perfect. So try starting a fire the next time you're on a camping trip. Moving on to our next survival skill, finding and purifying water. Water is not just a lifeline, it's the lifeblood of survival. In the wilderness, you can go weeks without food, but only a few days without water. And when we say water, we mean clean, drinkable water. Now you might be thinking, I'm surrounded by water in the great outdoors. And you'd be right. Rivers, lakes, and streams are abundant sources of water. But here's the kicker. Not all water is safe to drink. Even the clearest, most inviting stream can harbor harmful bacteria and parasites. That's why purifying your water is a must. So, how do we go about this? Well, there are several methods. First up is boiling. Boiling is the oldest and one of the most reliable ways to purify water. Just remember, it needs to be a rolling boil for at least one minute to kill most pathogens. Next up, we have filtering. Some of you might be familiar with the Sawyer filter or something similar. These handy devices can filter out most bacteria and protozoa. Just fill up a container with water, attach your filter, and let gravity do its thing. Remember to maintain your filter properly, including regular back flushing to keep it in tip-top shape. Last, but certainly not least, we have purification tablets. These are a great backup to have in your survival kit. They're lightweight, easy to use, and can kill bacteria, viruses, and protozoa. Just drop a tablet into your water container, wait for it to dissolve and do its magic, then you're good to go. One thing to keep in mind is time. All these methods take time, so start your water purification process early. You don't want to be stuck parched and dehydrated when night falls. And there you have it, finding and purifying water, a crucial survival skill that can mean the difference between life and death in the wilderness. Remember, not all water is created equal, so always ensure your water is clean before quenching your thirst. It may take a bit of time and effort, but it's well worth it. Staying hydrated is crucial in any situation, especially in survival scenarios. Last but not least, let's discuss the importance of finding or building a shelter. We're not talking about a five-star hotel here, folks. We're talking about a humble abode that keeps you safe from the elements. A good shelter can mean the difference between a comfortable night under the stars or a miserable night in the cold and rain. So, how do you choose a safe location for your shelter? Well, you need to consider a few things. First, look for a spot that's elevated and dry. You don't want to wake up in a puddle if it rains. Avoid low valleys and paths where water may flow. Also, watch out for dead trees or loose branches that could fall. Safety first, remember? Now, let's get into the nitty-gritty of setting up a basic shelter. You'll be surprised how a simple poncho and some 550 cords can do the trick. Lay the poncho out flat, tie the cords around the corners, and secure them to nearby trees or rocks. It's as easy as tying your shoelaces, but with a bit more finesse. But, what if it's hot during the day and chilly at night? Well, you can create airflow by raising one side of your poncho during the day. When night falls, lower it down to keep the warmth in. It's all about adjusting to the weather conditions, my friends. Next, let's talk about line kits. These little bundles of joy can make setting up your shelter a breeze. They're basically pre-cut lengths of cord with a carabiner on one end and a tensioner on the other. They're lightweight, compact, and a lifesaver when you're trying to set up your shelter in a jiffy. Now, before you lay down for the night, always check your sleeping area for insects and debris. You don't want any creepy crawlies sharing your bed, do you? Clear the area and insulate it with leaves or pine needles. They make a great natural mattress. Speaking of mattresses, if you can carry one, I'd recommend using an accordion-style pad or a blow-up micro-mattress. They can add a bit of comfort to your wilderness bedroom and help keep you warm by lifting you off the ground. Remember, your shelter is your home in the wilderness, so make it as comfortable and safe as possible. It's more than just a place to sleep. It's a place where you can rest, regain your strength, and prepare for the challenges ahead. So, take the time to build it right. The effort you put into it could save your life one day. And who knows? You might even enjoy a bit of wilderness living. Now that we've covered the basics, it's time to practice and enhance these skills. You see, survival skills are much like any other skills. They need to be honed and refined over time. 
They're not things you learn once and then forget. They're not static but dynamic. They evolve and grow with you, adapting to your needs and circumstances. The best way to refine these skills? Regular practice. Go out there. Start a fire without any modern tools. Purify water from a stream. Build a shelter with your bare hands. You'll find that each experience adds a new layer of understanding and expertise to your skill set. Now let's talk about modern tools. Yes, we've discussed the importance of mastering primitive methods. But it's also crucial to understand and appreciate the value of modern tools. They're not just convenient, they're confidence builders. They give you the assurance that you can survive, even in the harshest conditions. So start with modern tools, learn how to use them, understand their intricacies. Then, slowly but surely, transition to primitive methods. This way you're building a solid foundation and then adding layers of complexity and challenge. But remember, this is not a race. It's not about who can start a fire fastest or who can build the sturdiest shelter. It's about being prepared, being self-reliant. It's about knowing that if the need arises, you can fend for yourself. So get out there. Go on a camping trip with your friends, have a survival skills weekend. Make it fun, make it challenging. Because remember, survival skills are not just about surviving, they're about thriving. They're about embracing nature and all its challenges with open arms. In the end, it's not about the tools you have in your backpack, it's about the skills you have in your repertoire. And these skills, they're not just learned, they're earned. They're earned through practice, through experience, through trial and error. Remember. Practice is key to mastering these survival skills. So, there you have it. The three most important survival skills every man should know. We've journeyed together through the essentials of fire, water, and shelter. Remember, it's crucial to keep these survival techniques crisp in your mind and practice them regularly. It's not just about knowing, it's about doing and improving on these skills every day. Your support fuels this channel, so if you found this video helpful, why not become a part of our community? Hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and you'll never miss out on our survival tips. You can also become a member for exclusive content. We'd love to hear about your experiences, tips, and tricks. So do share them in the comments below. And if you think this video could help someone else, why not share it around? Remember, we're all in this together. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more survival tips. Stay safe out there.